Hello, it's Bart from Nature Factory this time. I will show you how to import our new Lava 2023 uh, asset. Uh, first of all, we go to the package manager. We uh, find the Lava asset and we click to download or import it depend on uh, if you have uh, this file downloaded already on disk. If we use built in, uh, you will get a message that uh, Unity package has uh, dependencies. It's because we use uh, mathematics for our spline and uh, we also check Unity shader graph, which is for uh, it's temporary, it will be this. This will be removed from the dependencies as soon as we, as we rebuild a bit particle shaders. So uh, we should click install and or upgrade. Now we get a message about files which will appear into our project. So we click import. Okay, so we have asset in our project files. Let's check if we have. mathematics and yes it is and trader graph inside uh, another thing that we should import is post processing it's because uh, lava basically uh, works with bloom effect without it uh, there is no emission inside the engine so uh, we should uh, Con uh, have already in our project post processing at URP and HTRP, it is already inside the project. So, okay, mm. now let's go to the project settings and adjust a bit our project. First of all, we should use linear color space because gamma it doesn't work well with post processing of course you could use gamma as well but probably some materials may need a bit adjustment if we go to the uh, graphics i think we should use uh, different rendering it's all because in forward rendering every uh, light object reflection prop uh, increase number of verts at our steam and this is not good in fact you multiply the uh, number of words by number of lights and uh, reflection props so our scenes use multiple reflection props multiple lights so uh, the best option is to use deferred rendering of course you could use forward rendering but it will be much slower if you want to use uh, objects that flow on the uh, lava surface we should also uncheck this in physics option because uh, without that there will be hard collision i mean object will stay on lava surface and doesn't move if we uncheck this checkbox in physics uh, object will be able to go through the lava and move with the flow so it's pretty important Okay, after all these things, we could go, for example, into our demo stream, Lava Tutorial, Lava Tutorial the set, and we could see everything is in the right place. If we want to use this part in HT or URP, please import HT. RP Super Park or URP Super Park. And of course, follow the uh, manual files. Here you have uh, all manual files related to pack. These two are related to particles which are inside the pack. And this one is directly to uh, lava shaders, lava system, spline system, right? Another thing that we should know about uh, Unity built-in is that Unity have bug with always refresh option. 
if we will turn it on since the time stop running on the engine uh, it should be in fact opposite but uh, at the moment it works as it works so uh, try to keep this off if you want to use uh, real time lava movement okay that's all let's import hdrp okay so for hdrp process is pretty similar we import our lava into the project we also will get information about dependencies that our asset use mathematics this time because shader graph and visual uh, graph is already inside HTRP. Also, post processing is also in already in HTRP. So, in fact, uh, only mathematics should be added, or even not. It may also be inside the engine. So, let's import them. Let's import our asset. After we import files into our project. We go to the lava folder and find HTRP support packs or URP if you use URP. And we go and check if HTRP version match the support pack version. If there will be big difference between these two, fire, uh, two versions, it may not work. Basically, it is stopped to destroy everything in every new version. But uh, for example, if you will use higher HTRP version and you will import lower HTRP support pack, some of the features may not work. We prepare files directly for each engine version. So uh, I suggest to use proper support pack to proper HTRP version. Let's import it. It contains shaders, materials, prefabs, demo things, profiles, everything uh, directly for your HTRP version. After files import is done, we go to demo scene and check if everything is fine. Seems to be okay now. Uh, let's go to the demo scene number two and check and show a few things. First of all, if we have a particles or materials that use subsurface, you could see that uh, here is a debug mode that show the profile, subsurface profile is missing. So we could go to the material with subsurface and there is a fix button. Uh, this will fix material with subsurface. Another the thing is that um, we use PowerFix at, uh, at uh, HTLP. So this distortion particles should be PowerFix. If they are not, it may happen if metadata will be messed during import. We go to the particles, prefabs, order, and we replace particle distortion to lava distortion prefab, soft to soft. And now we have a distortion for PowerFix, which is much, much faster than particles effect. And that's why we use it. And we have nice distortion effect on the lava surface. Okay, another thing. If we go to post-processing, you could notice that there is screen space reflection, which is turned off, screen space GI, which is turned off, and also there is no clouds on the sky. That's why we go to the project settings, our high fidelity HDRP in quality or whatever it use in your project and we turn on few things 
First is screen space global illumination. It's expensive effect, but if you will turn it on, it will may it may fix few things. Uh, it looks much better, but it's expensive. Let's turn it on for a test. Another thing is that we want volumetric clouds. It's also it also takes few FPS, but still looks much more natural. And screen space reflection also on transparent. And what we have here now, after we change that, we could notice that we could enable now G screen space GI. And I feel in a few cases it looks much better. Of course, you don't have to use it. And yes, that's all about this import process in HTTP. Uh, the thing that also you may meet is that if we go to our tutorial team, there is a real time lava flowing object, but it doesn't move. If we go to the always refresh option, it will start to move. The funny thing is opposite. This is opposite to built-in option. In fact, always refresh, turn on the time running in our Steam, and this will restart every time you will click play. So let's take a look. You could see that it ran again from the start point. So remember about this always refresh option if you want to have flow flowing lava and also if you have a http like the same like in built in you have physics and you have to turn turn this off right okay that's all okay so let's go to urp import process we import our lava into the urp project like before we have uh, worrying about dependencies because like in htrp and built-in we need mathematics um, library inside our project so we just click install and we import our pack to urp project after we import it we go to uh, asset uh, HG and URP support pack folder, and we will go into import URP files. Check if these files match your URP version because they should more or less be the same. In fact, uh, we prepare for every Unity Maya engine update, we prepare a new support pack because uh, of supporting new features. It may happen if the difference between these two uh, URP versions is too big. Uh, pack may not work at all. So if you update your asset and engine version, please also update URP version from support pack. So we import this. Basically, this file contains shaders, materials, prefabs, lighting settings, stints, everything for specific URP version. Okay, so after that, we go to the Tutorial Steam and we check if everything works fine. And it seems to everything be okay. Uh, the select version is not supported. URP doesn't support the selection yet. After URP starts to support the selection, we'll also update uh, this in our pack. Okay, few more setups. First of all, we'll, let's go to the demo, for example, two, and check a few things. First is that if we want to use distortion in our project, we have to go to project settings, quality, and let's turn on depth 
and optic edge draw. Now we will get distortion working. Second thing is that it's good to use deferred render because it's much faster. So we also check the effect. Of course, you could use forward, but every light and every reflection probe will multiply the amount of beds on the steam. This is how the engine works. Okay, let's turn off maybe a thousand. We don't need it. So now we have a particles which are unity particle system. If we want to use our fix, we go to the particle perhaps others and we replace unity particles by VFX. From start they may not work. We need a visual effect. So we go to the Unity package manager, we go to Unity Registry, type visual effect graph. We install it. Basically they are much faster than Unity particles. And we highly advise to use visual effect graphs instead of particles, especially for distortion. This will save a lot of FPS. Okay, but this also may not work still. That's why we'll go to our particle shaders. And there is a graph which we prepared for visual effects we simply add it click save and we see that it starts to work out of the box if we also want to use physics we go to our demo so we could check that we go to edit project settings physics we switch all this option and if we will click play, rock will start to flow over the lava surface, right? Without that option, turn it off, it will simply stay on the lava surface instead of swimming. Right? It moves with flow mode. So that's all for ERP. Uh, if you have uh, any questions about importing or if you have any problems during importing process, check out our Discord, we'll help you. And that's all.